We've already seen in Europe a number of severe terror attacks. The explosion blew the top deck apart, the roof was sheared off. And many other attacks have been thwarted by their authorities. You're looking at an attempted suicide bomb attack, not in Iraq, but Glasgow Airport. What we're seeing in Europe are both the cultural and violent jihad strategies at play, which is why many believe Europe is on the verge of a breakdown. Britain is in a state of denial, as is much of Europe, uh, and to a certain extent America too. A state of denial about the nature and extent, but particularly the nature of the threats that we're up against. We are not uh, Muslims living within the UK who are simply here to integrate and become part and parcel of democracy and, and, and freedom and adopt these values. Rather, what we hope to do is to engage within British society, to call to the sovereignty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and one day, inshallah, implement the Sharia over, over man-made law and inshallah over, the, over Downing Street and Washington itself. A recent survey of Muslims shows that 30% would rather live under Sharia law than democracy. 28% would like to see Great Britain become an Islamic state. And an overwhelming majority, 81%, consider themselves Muslim first and British second. A very significant proportion of British Muslims do not accept the terms of settlement accepted by all other immigrant communities, which is that when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Uh, when in Britain, you observe British law. You don't expect British law to change to accommodate Islamic law. Uh, on the contrary, they do expect British law to change to accommodate Sharia law, and that is the big difference. Rather than the Muslims adopting British values, why you not adopt our values? Why you believe that the British values are superior over the, over the um, Islamic values? This creeping Sharia is the biggest threat uh, to Western freedom. These small incremental concessions that you make for so-called multicultural reasons are regarded by the other side as enormous victories. And Piglet on your desk is no longer acceptable. And the Burger King ice cream swirl is no longer acceptable. And the shirt that the Milan Football Club wears when it plays games is no longer acceptable. I think those kind of concessions, the concessions made uh, in the Danish cartoon case, uh, they all go the same way. A non-Muslim exercises his right of freedom of expression. He does something that would be regarded as perfectly normal. And the Muslims object. Those objections are often accompanied by death threats, vandalism, and oftentimes event actual deaths too. How does the state react? The state generally reacts the same way by regretting uh, that the original non-Muslims ever did anything in the first place and calling for us to all be more considerate about where we draw the line. Across the Arab world, there's been outrage at the publication of cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. The Prime Minister of Denmark has appeared on Arab television in a desperate attempt to calm the situation. It's all very moderate, moderate, moderate. But what it means is that you're drawing the line tighter and tighter and tighter round your own freedom of expression. When you call out for the silencing of cartoonists or for uh, censoring the press, then you are touching on fundamental freedoms that we all believe in. Muslims don't want to see representations of Muhammad. That's fine, fine, good for them. But I'm not a Muslim. And if I want to draw Muhammad, I don't see why I shouldn't be allowed to. Insulting the Prophet is obviously an offense. But in the past, Islamic law was only concerned with such offenses in Muslim countries. Whatever happens in the lands of the infidels outside the jurisdiction of a Muslim state is not the concern of Muslim law. The only explanation I can think of is that they now consider you are a part of the House of Islam. All these incremental things are actually the real battleground and where we'll lose this thing. No, 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 no. 
There is another factor in the Islamists' favour, which is sheer demographic weight of numbers. Um, there are now many millions of Muslims in Britain and Europe. Do you know which name is more popular right now in Great Britain? George or Mohammed? George? Uh, Wrong. No, it's Mohammed. Essentially, we live in a world where the most advanced societies are going out of business. In Spain, they have an upside-down family tree. You have four grandparents who have two children who have one grandchild. You do that for another 20, 30, 40 years, uh, they're not going to be any more Spaniards. Most of the countries in Western Europe are in the process of becoming Muslim-majority countries. The proportion of Muslims in the population is increasing steadily. People say, oh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, only 10% of the population of France is Muslim. What's the big deal? It's going to be centuries before this ever, any of this ever happens. Not true at all. If you, if you have a um, population where 90% of the population have, say, 1.4 children, and 10% of the population uh, have, uh, have, have 3.8 children, then that 10% will have caught up with the 90%. It happens very, very fast, and it's happening very fast. There are now many millions of Muslims in Britain and Europe. And the point about these communities is that unlike other immigrant communities, they don't wish to integrate and they don't integrate. They kind of reinforce themselves as insular communities. We believe Islam is supreme. We believe Islam will dominate. They do see uh, the fertility rate as a key element of conquest, as they put it. This is a form of subtle, subtle threat that you cannot ignore it. It grows gradually. And the moment you recognize its existence, it's like cancer. The moment you recognize its symptoms, it's usually too late. Europe, I think, is already a lost cause. And as time goes on, America will be endangered. You know, many have said that, well, American Muslims are much more assimilated and we don't have as much of a problem. I think that we're just a little behind where Europe has already gotten to.